You jam. Yeah, baby. Yes, you do. This video is going to be about you jam virtual instruments. Now, the thing is, the reason why I'm doing this video, here's the thing. Every time a new one of these comes out, I go to look at these uh, review videos and that, and I have to sit through the beginning of the video where everybody goes through the, um, this is where all of the controls are. And guess what? There's a reason why they all look similar. That's because the controls are basically the same. So this video is to introduce you to the uh, UJAM ecosystem and basically just explain the approach. And then from then on, I am going to cover all of the instruments that I have access to, but without all the crap at the beginning. Yo. Look at my nice collection of UJAM instruments. I, I can't afford the whole full bundle. I haven't really bought any bundles, except actually I did buy the base bundle, but that was before VB Dandy came out, so that's only a trial version over there. A couple of trial versions here. But that's not a bad selection of UJAM instruments. I consider myself a lucky producer. So let's just bring up one of them. I like this one, um, Candy, because it's kind of like mainstream pop kind of thing that everyone can sort of relate to. It's not genre specific, really. Here's the approach that these instruments have. This is a um, part of the Beatmaker series. It's a drumming instrument, if you like. And on the left here, we've got all of the drum sounds. And we can use our MIDI input device to play it like a regular old MIDI drum. Then the dedicated input to triggering phrases. Uh, which are locked into the the BPM of your DAW. So I'm 140 here. Let's just say I just reduce that to 120. So that now that means that if I hold down one of these keys, it's just triggering a phrase. Obviously, this is a default preset, and each one of these different piano keys in the uh, diagram diagram in the user interface. Uh, will trigger an individual loop, uh, a MIDI loop to be specific. And the MIDI loop will obviously drive the, the built-in uh, drum sampler that is part of the instrument as well. So it is a MIDI instrument and uh, it's, a, it's a drum sampler, okay? So here's the thing, as we go further up the keyboard, you can see there are um, more and more layers introduced. So we go from simple, to dense complexity. And then this last bit here is sort of uh, adds a little bit of um, embellishments to an otherwise fairly sort of standard progression, consistently increasing loop style, shall we say. The loop style is related to the preset, obviously. So we can just select different presets and have different loop styles. But you can see that these loop styles are necessarily consistent, which is exactly what we want when we're just trying to get work done, okay? Uh, I should stop clicking on the black keys because it's actually the white keys, which have consistent loop styles. And then the black keys have different functionality. You can see at the top here, I don't have to read them out to you, you can see them for yourself. Um, but I will say that this last end here is where you have like some breakdowns and stuff like that. I said I wouldn't read it out to you and I just did. Okay, so it's up to you just to use these creatively to add some flavor to your existing flavor. Okay, so speaking of flavors, they're all up here in the presets. I really hate this kind of really old school menu system where you've got to be super accurate with your mouse to drill down. It's just dumb. I prefer the other MIDI instruments which have a browser which takes up part of the user interface and you can just sort of browse it around and click on them and jump around here and there. Whereas this is not really ergonomical. It's just, uh, why, why? Anyway, let's pick something crunchy. Let's pick this crunchy one. Okay, so that's lo-fi goodness. Okay, so you get the general idea. I really don't have to do lots of example demos and stuff to explain that to you. Later on when we review instruments, we'll do lots of demos and examples to try to familiarize you with the, the personality of 
the individual instruments. Which brings me to another thing. UJAM could have easily created one plugin which does all of the different genres, but different genres have different values they will want to do, they will want to focus on tricks that are applied to that genre. I think it's really great what they've done by separating them out and the user interface has a universality to it. There's different language in the user interface which speaks to producers who are producing for that genre. And I think that's I prefer that. Other people might say, well, it's just a way for them to make more money. You know, well, you could look at that in an inverted way. You could say, well, you know, if they just made one instrument, it'd be really expensive and it'd have a whole bunch of stuff that's in there for genres I'm not interested in. And this way you actually get to buy it for cheaper because they just break out the bits that you want. It doesn't matter how you look at it. Your glass can be half full or half empty. You know, whoever whoever's going to complain is going to complain regardless of, you know, how good how many opportunities if you don't like it you know don't buy it <laughs> but this is i think this is a great approach and i actually like the fact that these um uis are visually interesting you know they have a, a flavor that appeals to the sort of target genre if you like you can see that the it also allows them to kind of evolve their core approach to things as they bring out new stuff, which I rather like. So all of their 2.x instruments are going to have the same generation of user interface approach and internal engine, internal sound engine that is based on the 2.0 engine, if you like. Ample Sound does this with their guitars as well, Ample Guitars. They have like uh, different generations of their plugins. So they've got like, they're up to generation three now. So UJAM is up to generation two, at least with their beat machines. But I think with across the, the whole entire range as well with their, their bass instruments and stuff. So sticking to the beat machines for just now, actually, no, I'll prove a point. Um, so you see how basically all of these start at C3, all of these loop triggerings start at C3 and they head all the way up to B4. That allows you to do something very interesting, which I'll show you right now. Here's what I'm going to do. I was going to show you um, a way that I like to quickly lay down beats using the UJAM approach. Okay. This is about exploration of um, musical ideas. So when I say a musical idea, it might be a loop and a drum kit together. So a musical idea is just me holding down this key, for example. Okay, so that's one musical idea, right? So I might go to another preset and I go, same thing. I'm going to go into the MIDI clip by double clicking it. I'm going to go back to the piano view because I want to actually, instead of focusing, you see this, how it's blue over here. I love how UJAM just integrates with Studio One's new key switching um, functionality, which they've changed now. It's not called key switching anymore. I think they call it note variations. So that's a new thing. Uh, sound variations. Here it is. Here's the title, sound variations. So you can, I can click on that. And the, these are all the sound variations over here. So if you look at these titles here, intros, verses, fills, choruses, endings, blah, 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 all of that stuff. If, you, if I click on sound variations here, you can see that they are reflected up here and you'll see that in a minute. Okay, so what I'm gonna to do to explore these musical ideas is I am going to create a four bar loop here, which is, that would be four bars, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna start by the first four bars, we're just gonna have um, a verse. Um, and we just wanna to listen to this loop. So one bar for each loop, and then we work our way up, right? But it's gonna be really boring for us to have to like sit there and whack it out on the keyboard all the time. So I'm just going to um, create a MIDI file, which will do that for us. Now you'll notice that I'm skipping the, the black keys because the black keys have specific functionality. So that's an intro here. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stretch this bar out to the beginning a little bit and just uh, explore the intro as well. So there's one intro we can explore. Maybe we can explore two intros. Let's just expand it again. And let's just, um, let's just preview both intros um, while we're exploring these musical concepts. And then we'll hit the verses for three bars and then a fill actually. We'll do a fill on the last one. And in fact, we'll do a couple of more verses. So let me just, um, I'll split this guy here. 
And then I'll just duplicate this guy and then we're just going to grab the verses and then move them up. Okay, and that starts a chorus actually by the look of it. Actually, so what we'll do is we'll just, instead of doing that, we'll just uh, make that verse go a bit longer. What am I doing? Why is it splitting it? And then we'll go fill two. All right. And in fact, I'll tell you what we'll do. Just in the interest of expedience, we'll do, we'll explore fill two and three. So we'll have a two bar fill in the second lot of four bars. <laughs> All right. So we've got eight bars and three fields covered, and that takes care of uh, exploring all of the verse loops. So we're going to go through all of those. Anyway, let me just play it. Shut up and play it. Okay, so now we've explored all of the verse loops that this preset has to offer. So we're just going to quickly go ahead and um, duplicate this so that we can do the same with the chorus loops. So I'm just going to select these ones that were dedicated to verse and just keep going up until it says chorus. Excellent. Oh, oopsie daisy, deselect. Okay, and um, I think we will just leave the fields in there again. All right, that's cool, fine, whatever. I'll just delete this one, and then I'm just going to duplicate that one. And then we'll keep going up with more chorus. Chorus four. Chorus five. And now we're going to the specials. Uh, okay, I don't know if we should do specials. We should do the whole double fill again. Okay, so let me just start labeling these. And to do the labeling, I'm going to take advantage of Studio One's lovely arranged track. So let's create. Just create an intro here. And then we have just a verse over here. Double click and chorus. That's almost magical. Look at that. All right. So we're building up our little um, U Jam beat making exploration tool here. You can see where I'm going with this, eh? Those who are, those who are clever, those who are clever would have figured it out by now. And in fact, we have we don't need to repeat these fills. Sorry, Phil, no offense. Let's just go over here. Okay, so we've got, we've explored fill one, two, and three. And then instead of doing these fills again, let's just, not that it's musical, but just for functionality, let's get up into the specials. And breakdowns, special, 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 special three. Okay, basically you can see we're just covering all of our lines here is a matter of exploration. So that when we're getting to know the personality of a preset, uh, all we need to do is just trigger our loops and off we go. So now I'm just going to play this through again, but guess what I'm going to do? This time I'm going to start switching through presets and... Um, that's going to be the whole purpose. You heard that before. Can speed up the tempo a bit. Yeah, it doesn't work.
Okay, you get the idea. So we can sit there all day and we can flick through presets, but that's not what this particular video is about. But check this out, right? So now I've got all these other instruments over here. I can easily just grab this toolkit. In fact, I'm just going to press G to merge them all so it's just one clip. And I'm going to hold down Control, oh sorry, Alt, and then I'm just going to drag them down to all of the other ones as well. And so now I can just, um, I'm going to solo these individual ones, right? And then I can go through and I can listen to some of these other instruments. Okay, so this is <clears throat> their virtual drummer series is obviously very similar to their beat maker series. They kind of just, I don't know, domains of genres. This is more traditional, I guess. But guess what? It's all consistent. They use the same structure, same range of keys for ver verses and choruses, etc. So I can basically just use the same mentality and the same MIDI set to explore them all. So here's the thing, when you're composing right, you're not necessarily going to be sitting here going, oh today I'm just going to go and listen to three hours of presets using this exploration MIDI. What's likely to be the case is that you've got your musical idea and you've got, um, I don't know, you want to get something out by the afternoon and you're just, you've done most of the stuff and you, you've only got like, I don't know, 15 minutes to just quickly just throw a beat in there. You can get one of these more traditional instruments like, uh, let's just grab VD Solid. So basically the generic one for pop is beat make your candy and the generic one for <laughs> for generic music <laughs> it was solid you know solid solid's really solid okay so here's what i'm doing i'm just holding down alt here while i drag this keys these uh these um midi things down i don't know i should have just pointed them all to the same midi file you know whatever um and the other thing too is you can hold down alt when you click solo in studio one and it'll just um selectively switch between the two it'll toggle between the instruments so that's what we're doing and i'll just go to the beginning and start that so i guess you could say solid is generic for generic rock We're just Let me jack up the tempo a bit.
There you go. Get some hip hop. Obviously, try to use the BPM that's appropriate for the genre. You can see over here, which the style always has the BPM um, next to it. So, if you really want to get a feel for the intent of the style, try to get, try to match. Oh my god, just fucking type it in, dude. I can't keyboard. There we go. So here's another nasty cheat, which I which I sometimes do. I uh, I sometimes shh, don't tell anyone. I sometimes blend them together. That's right. Don't cross the streams. Yes, that's right, folks. Sometimes I cross the streams with the genres, and I I will actually um, yeah I I uh, I blend them together. I'm not proud of it, but uh, yes, let's blend some solid and some dope. So now we're gonna have fun. Um, with different permutations of styles. And I haven't even tweaked the stuff yet. I'll show you the tweaking for the stuff in the different um, the different individual reviews because the tweaking of the stuff is also genre specific, which is another reason why I just love the whole splitting it up into different things. It's great. It's better than just one monolithic plugin which tries to do them all in one hit, like, you know, Easy Drummer or Superior Drummer or whatever. Sorry, Team Track, not trying to pick on you. Doesn't sound too bad. Some people are going to go, oh my God, that just sounds like a car trashing into a train wreck. But, you know, <laughs> it's, it's different. <laughs> I'm not going to vouch for it. Yeah, no. Nah. Okay, so, bro, we got so many of these to play with. You know, it's like, I just picked this up uh, the other day. Actually, actually, darling, I just picked this up the other day. So uh, let's see what that's in. This 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 one's crazy actually. This is um supposed to be sort of for cinematic stuff and that, but I don't know, man. You could use it for like heavy, angry hip hop, and you could also use it for metal subgenres, maybe. Can't help myself. I'm gonna turn it on.
No, I'm just being sacrilegious. never know you might actually hit gold at some point <laughs> there's, there's, no, there's no right way or wrong way it's just you know, I don't know maybe there is <laughs> but yeah um, man seriously that's just uh, that's just my tip on how to take advantage of um, these U-Jam instruments um, there are plenty of videos out there t- showing you where to click and what the different interface elements do. Uh, I don't need to repeat that stuff. Um, My thing, I think I'll be able to bring more value if I focus on uh, things in context. So I might even bring out a series of beat making candy in context. Okay, jack up the BPM again. And here we here we are, 125 BPM. This was intended for. That's not to be exact. Oh my goodness, that one's just so boring. Ooh, that one's pretty sweet. Nice. 150. Holy smokes. There we go. And then of course. Um, If you, where do you click to get that? Ah, yes, if you click over there, hidden away, you can do like a half speed or double speed. That's not bad, actually. I might uh, (laughs) might mix that with void. Void is sort of drum and bass oriented. If you didn't already know, sort of 160. Similar BPMs.